right. Well, I am so incredibly excited because we are back in one of my favorite cities. Uh, we are in our nation's capital at Washington, D.C. And for anybody who is into history on any level whatsoever, uh, this city has so much to offer. There's so much to see and, and so much to learn here in Washington, D.C. The Washington, D.C. is a city that isn't unfamiliar to problems and to scandals. This goes all the way back to our nation's founding. So you have like John Adams with the XYZ affair, uh, Andrew Jackson with the, the Eaton affair, uh, all the way up through like Warren Harding with the Teapot Dome scandal. Uh, there was Bill Clinton uh, with the notorious Monica Lewinsky scandal. But there's only one of these scandals that brought down a president. And it occurred right here at this building that I'm walking in front of right now. This is the infamous Watergate Hotel, and you will not believe the room that we are going to be staying in tonight. Well, here we are outside the entrance to the now infamous Watergate Hotel. Uh, this hotel was built uh, throughout the late 60s and then went through a major multi-million dollar renovation in 2016. Uh, so I'm pretty anxious to, to get inside here and uh, take a look around and, and get up to the room that we're going to be staying in tonight. All right, so we are walking in the front doors and uh, holy smokes this uh, this place right off the bat is something else Wow all right we're gonna go ahead and get checked in here and then uh, take a look around the water gate here a bit In the late 60s, whenever the Watergate was built, like in DC, this was the place to be. Uh, had guests the likes of John Wayne and uh, Elizabeth Taylor, all kinds of uh, you know important politicians came here to the Watergate. So whenever they redesigned it, uh, they, they kind of kept a lot of that uh, kind of old aesthetic, but, but it still has a very modern feel to it. And uh, yeah, it's, Every time I look at something new, I'm just amazed at, at, at what they've done with this place. Okay, so this is not designed to be a documentary by any means. I'm, I'm just showing the place, but I do feel like I need to provide a, a little bit of historical context for the importance of this place. So in 1972, it was an election year. Richard Nixon was running against the Democratic challenger, George McGovern, and Nixon kind of had Oh, just like this paranoid side to him and uh, was was constantly trying to maneuver and dig up dirt on people and and it was a, a little bit of a schemer you might say now whenever we're talking about Watergate there are a few key figures that are involved in this story one of them is a guy by the name of G Gordon Liddy G Gordon Liddy was an ex FBI agent who had been hired to basically run covert operations for the Nixon campaign another one who is very key in the Watergate scandal was a man by the name of James McCord. James McCord had been in the CIA and was hired to be the security chief basically for an organization called the Committee to Re-elect the President or CREEP for short. Which by the way, if you're running for president, don't pick an organizational name that 
can uh, be twisted to use the word creep. Uh, that's, that's just bad optics. Uh, another one who is involved in the Watergate scandal is a man by the name of E. Howard Hunt. He was a consultant to the White House. So here's where Watergate figures into all of this. In 1972, the Democratic National Committee had their headquarters here in the Watergate office complex. So a plan was hatched where under the leadership of G. Gordon Liddy, uh, there was going to be a break-in into the DNC headquarters. Uh, they were going to plant listening devices, they were going to go through documents and, and do anything they could to try and dig up some dirt on George McGovern. Well, on May 28th of 1972, they had the first break-in, but there were some problems with the listening devices and, and they weren't exactly getting the information that they wanted. So a second break-in was planned on the 17th of June, 1972. The four burglars, along with James McCord, uh, were right here in the, uh, in the Watergate Hotel, uh, the room that we're going to be staying in. They, they had all of their, um, their operations set up. Well, unfortunately, the man who was supposed to serve as the lookout uh, was watching a show called Attack of the Puppet People, and um, a, a janitor had noticed that there had been some tape on one of the doors uh, to keep the DNC offices from, from being locked. Long story short, the burglars all got caught, and this started a cascade of events that was going to eventually lead to the resignation of Richard Nixon. All right, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and head on up to our room. And dang, uh, that is a fancy elevator button. Huh. Okay, so uh, we just got up here on the second floor of the Watergate Hotel and uh, getting ready. Let's see. Yep, here we go. So this is now room 205. Uh, after they did the renovations here, the, the room numbers switched up a little bit. But this was originally room 214 where the Watergate burglars had their room on the night of the break-in and where they kind of staged their operations at. <laughs> so I just got out my key and uh, look at this. No need to break in. That is hilarious. All right, here we go. All right, well, uh, here we go. <laughs> oh into the scandal room of the Watergate Hotel. <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, this is pretty dang cool. And there's a lot that is going on in here that we're just gonna have to take a little bit of time to, to pick apart and show. Uh, man, I cannot believe that I'm in here though. Okay, I've actually backed up to kind of take in all of the stuff that they have here. Uh, so here, uh, obviously, we're looking at the man who became the center of the Watergate scandal, Richard Nixon himself. And it uh, looks like they got a little calling card down there from Richard Nixon. And then as you move along here, well, they have this plaque that says, The Watergate Hotel Scandal Room 214 created in honor of the 45th anniversary of the notorious Watergate break-in. Uh, the signature guest room experience is available for a limited time, captures the infamy and intrigue of one of the most famous guest rooms in the world, and I would definitely agree. So if you kind of look here, now obviously they don't have the, the original furnishings. Uh, I, I think this is better because you're really struck with the historic nature of, of this room and the fact that you can stay in here is just pretty <laughs> it, it really is amazing uh, that, that we're here so here you can see they have all kinds of different uh, original newspapers and magazines 
that deal with the Watergate scandal. Uh, a lot of them, you know, with Nixon's resignation and, of course, talking about some of the famous tapes. Um, wow. <laughs> I absolutely love this. They also have a nod to the movie All the President's Men with uh, Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman in here, which of course is about uh, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, the two uh, post reporters who basically started pulling on the thread and unraveling the story of the Watergate scandal. Okay, so on the night of June 16th of 1972, uh, two of the Watergate burglars uh, by the name of Barker and Martinez checked into this room right here and they were later joined by Howard Hunt and G. Gordon Liddy and, and this is kind of where they they ran the operations for the the burglary from. Um, now obviously as I've already mentioned they don't have the original furnishings. Uh, this has been completely redesigned and they worked in collaboration with the costume designer from the show Scandal. Uh, so they, even though it's it's got like a, a modern vibe to it, uh, they've been really good about integrating different items from the 1970s and, and giving it kind of this new old feel. Uh, here, here's some of the things that they have. So here you can see some of the things that they included in the design for this room. They have this old record player. Uh, and they even have some, some old records that I saw as well that we might play later, but I can't on the channel or else I'll get hit with a copyright strike. Uh, but anyway, they also have like this old reel-to-reel -reel recorder. Oh, dude, check out this phone. Interesting. Old typewriter. <laughs> Welcome to the Watergate Hotel. Very, very cool. I, I, I love all of the aesthetics that they have set up in this room. Here's another little nuance that almost slipped by me. Notice the date set on the 17th, as in June 17th, 1972, whenever the Watergate burglars got caught. Nice touch. All right, had to step in and show the bathroom here, which I've got to say is quite nice. Uh, but what I really wanted to show was the cover up bathrobe. <laughs> There's just all kinds of little, little details and nuances in this place that, that you keep discovering whenever you stay here. Uh, that, that's a nice touch though. There's something that I can also appreciate as they uh, have this room set up with with some old books. And hey, look at here. So uh, anybody under the age of uh, say 25, this is called a record. <laughs> this is what people used to play music on, like Elton John, Rocket Man. Because of the Watergate matter. I might not have the support of the Congress that I would consider necessary to back the very difficult decisions and carry out the duties of this office in the way the interests of the nation will require. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. All right, I'm uh, going to come out here and take a, a quick look on the balcony. And uh, out here, as you can see, have a really nice view of the Potomac River. But to me, what's more interesting is what's just across the way here. On the sixth floor of the Watergate office complex right here, well, that 
is where the break-in at the DNC headquarters took place. Crazy. This is, <laughs> this is just something else to me. Uh, I mean, as you know from watching the channel, I, I love going to these historic places and, and experiencing history where it happened. And uh, my gosh, to, to be here, uh, you know, on the balcony of room 214 where the, the Watergate burglars were set up and, and to be looking at the office complex of the DNC where they broke in and basically, uh, you know, started the unraveling of Nixon's presidency, such a historic event. Golly, I don't have the words. Uh, I, I'm so glad that, that they have this place here um, and, and that they've done what they've done with it to, to kind of keep the history alive uh, here at this hotel. Um, anyway, earlier we, we saw some old 45s in there and I was going through them. They've got some Smokey Robinson and, and Elton John and, and some of the music from the 60s and 70s. So uh, I think we're going to kind of settle in for the evening and uh, maybe put on some 45s and, and listen to them. And uh, yeah, just kind of enjoy our night here at uh, room 214 of the Watergate Hotel. Morning. Doing well. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, uh, that might have been one of the coolest places I have ever stayed in my life. Uh, if you ever come to Washington, D.C., you really should consider staying at the Watergate Hotel, even if you don't stay in the Scandal Room. Uh, just the history of this place makes it worth uh, a couple nights stay. Uh, and whenever you're talking about Watergate, it's kind of funny how this place has figured in not only to our history, uh, but how it's kind of worked its way into the culture. So now anytime there's some sort of event happening that might have a scandal or a cover up attached to it, we attach the name gate to it, like uh, Pizza Gate or uh, Deflate Gate or Monica Gate. And they all have their roots in the most infamous gate of all, the Watergate. So glad that we had the opportunity to stay here last night and uh, definitely cannot wait to come back. 